What's up guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Tomorrow morning, I'm shooting a little test. Uh, it should only be a couple of hours, but it's a super early start tomorrow. Um, we're shooting really close to my house at the skate park, in Victoria Park in London, using the polished concrete transitions, the long shadows of the sunrise. And um, I'm av I've arranged with a boxer who's with a talent slash modeling agency, going to do some shadow boxing, make it really graphic looking with the lines and stuff. We're keeping it super simple. It should look very good. I've done my intro this evening because it's a super early start, but let me show you what kit I'm going to take. There's hell. So I've got the Canon 5D Mark IV. I've got the 50mm 1.2, which I got a while back now and uh, hasn't come off the camera since. The 70 to 200 2.8 which I also it's pretty much between these two which uh, I, I kind of stick with. But I've got the 24 to 105 here. Um, I'm going to try and do some video as well. I used to do a lot more BMX video but I've kind of slacked on the video things. Road mic. The trusty Olympus OM10, yes, there is no lens cap there. There's a roll of 200 in it. I've also got some super clamps. Uh, I'm going to take a reflector and use these to attach it to the stand. It's just me and the model tomorrow. Okay, let's go. One quick thing. I've just bought some simple bits from H&M. With sports stuff, I, I don't know about anyone else, but if I'm shooting tests, I find it quite tricky to find uh, stylists who are willing to just shoot stuff simply for their portfolio, and I totally get it. Everyone needs to grow their portfolio and get it placed in a sort of uh, editorial sense. So with sports stuff, there's not too many sports editorial magazines or platforms, so I guess uh, that's why it's tricky to find uh, stylus for sports stuff. I went to H&M and I just picked up some simple stuff. Always worth considering styling obviously. Um, there's been times when I've just said to the models to take their own things and you just don't know what they're going to turn up on. And especially if you've got a concept and a vision in mind, take control of it basically. That's kind of what I've learned over the years is if you've got a clear vision of what you want to shoot, Take control of it unless you can source someone and you are confident that they are better at it than you. Okay, now I'll see you in the morning and then we'll get going. So there we have it, that was the shoot. I tried to shoot uh, some behind the scenes, really pleased with the video stuff that I got and kind of pleased how that little montage turned out. Might try a bit more of that rather than just doing everything on my iPhone, you know, like a proper, a proper photographer. Video, 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 I don't know. Anyway, I'm just, I'm just a photographer. Hopefully you can tell from that little video, I stuck to the 50mm 1.2, which I pretty much do all the time, always now, love that lens, I really, um, do I need to get off it? I don't know. Look at what my iPhone's doing. I had one of those protective screens placed on it. They were doing them for a tenor in Westfield, and he's placed it too close to the camera. 50mm 1.2, one thousandth of a second, and kind of went from f4 up to 7.1. Like that shot from when I was up high above, looking down when he was in the deep section of the skate park, the deep section of the bowl. Uh, the sunlight was amazing. I mean, I know all photographers say, catch the good light at morning or evening. I'm really pleased with how they turned out. Let's go to the laptop and I'll try and talk you through my workflow. I kept it super simple here. I just went into Capture One, uh, added some presets which kind of already existed, tweaked those, and then I got it into Photoshop and the retouching was super minimal on this. I added a little bit of flair for some of them. I added, uh, yeah, took out any leaves or cracks in the concrete and stuff, but 
let's get into it i'll show you on the screen okay guys here we are i've got all my images imported here in capture one and i will go over to my user presets user styles that i've already saved from previous shoots or just little tinkering bits I'll flick through these and see which suits this shoot the best. I might tweak it a little bit to customize it. And there you go, I'll apply that to all the images and then I'll work through them adding stars for my favorites. Once I've starred all my favorites, I'll go ahead and create a smart album. In this smart album, it'll have a filter, which is one star plus, and I'll set that to filter all the images so the only images in the folder are greater than or equal to one star that will give me a folder of just my selects and here we are in the smart album as you can see i think there's 51 images in there a few are the same you can see those all on the right hand side there they're all quite similar so what i'll do is i'll control b control t to get rid of my browser and tabs so i can see these larger and I can really compare them and see which one I prefer. This is where I tend to get a bit too fussy. And in the end, I think I went for four or five of these images and just retouched them because I was doing it super simple. From that point, I'll go through my selects and I'll either zero or two star the ones that I like there. I think you might be able to see some two stars there on the right. And I'll go ahead and create another smart album and guess what? It's two star plus this time, and it narrows it even further. So I've got my 15 selects here. I'll go to that little cog at the top right of the menu on the left hand side of the page, and I'll go to render the TIFFs. One thing I've noticed here is that I've named the files wrong. So I'll go back to my smart albums. I'll go to all images, select all, and then I'll rename. And I always rename my images, starting with the year and the month, and usually I do the day, but I haven't done it here for some reason, and then uh, a reference name, so Anthony Agogo. I'll reset the three-digit counter, that way usually when you're delivering to clients, they can just give you that three digits at the end of, your, of the file name, and it's really simple to pick out your images and get the files, the selected files, across to your client. And there we go, rendering out the TIFFs, and I'll now pull those into Photoshop. Okay, here we are in Photoshop, guys. I've already retouched this one, but I've pulled in the TIFF just so I can show you guys. As you can see, what's that? Six layers, six adjustment layers. Um, so you know the retouching here is super simple. First thing I'll do when I've got my layer uh, initially in Photoshop is if there's any blemishes or what I did this time at least, is I'll go and get my patch tool or J on the keyboard and I'll just work into it. I wanted this to have a bit more of a polished concrete look. So I'll go around and I'll just take out any bits that are unsightly, any cracks and box your ankle. There you go, you work into it a little bit. And uh, there we are. As you can see in the top left here, we've got this little bit of sky. I wanted to kind of get rid of that. It's nice in some pictures, but it's a little distracting here. What you can even do is get the marquee tool and stretch it. I couldn't do it too much here as it kind of warped the concrete, but I did a little bit. Grab that patch tool again and get back into it. And you can see if I toggle it on and off, much cleaner in the second one. And I've worked in a little bit further in this one here. So next thing I'll usually do is I'll try and add a bit of contrast, muscle definition to, uh, to the model, Anthony here. And as you can see by this inverted curves layer, if I toggle it on and off, it's adding a nice highlight on his hand and actually on the left side of his face, our right. So here's how it's done. Get a curves adjustment layer, pull up for highlights, down for darks, just get it so it's showing up there. So you can see it's quite bright, but you don't want to pull it too high because you don't want to blow anything out. Create a mask, click this little button here, command I to invert it so it hides it. You need the rubber now and I usually set this to about 20% opacity and 20% full. You can set it less if you want to be more subtle. Start to rub away the bits that I want to highlight. So this is much more effective than just using a curves layer. You can, you know, a lot of people just add contrast and away you go. But here, you can actually choose specific parts which you want to highlight. And the same for the opposite. You can pull your curves layer down, 
and darken up any bits that you want. I just did his t-shirt and some folds there to really add a bit of contrast. Here's one I did for the background. The background was just a little too dark, but I didn't want to bring Anthony up. So invert that curves layer again for some highlights and I rubbed that out and there you go. It was, the whole thing was just a little too dark so I just added a very discreet brightening curves layer and what I'll always do is I'll have a brightness and contrast layer racked with the brightness racked all the way up. I often find if I edit with this layer on it shows up blemishes easier so then when you take it off You've got no worries about people seeing it on different screens, different blemishes showing up. Obviously, all different screens are different quality. And there we go, guys. That's pretty much all I did in Photoshop. Okay, I hope that helps. A few people have been asking for workflows quite a bit recently. Um, unfortunately, the screen record with QuickTime, I don't know if anyone else has experienced this, is quite heavy on your Mac. My Mac's a few years old and it's really starting to trudge along so those uh, screen record workflows especially with Photoshop or Premiere running can be a bit tricky. If you stuck this far thanks very much guys thanks for watching taking an interest I hope I brought some value if there's anything I've missed or any questions that have arisen from watching this workflow please hit me up in the comments or you can reach out to me on Instagram or you know DM or even email whatever suits. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you on the next one.